Here we will showcase to you the evolution of the wolf in a timeline. Well, sort of. Keep in mind that in evolutionary biology and taxonomy, there are quite a lot of missing things to say the least. This is because fossils require specific conditions to form and, sometimes, the discoveries are either fragmentary remains or that scientists take quite a long time to ascertain as to which species these fossils would belong to. Anyway, surprisingly, the evolution of the wolf is more documented as compared to tons of other animals. And thus, here we are streamlining it as best as we can, plus taking a look at where the dire wolf would fit in. So let's get to it. After the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, mammals slowly became the dominant species on land in the Cenozoic era. And over time they began to diversify with different clades and families. So about 40 million years ago, the dog family, which is also called Canidae, began to develop, and as of today, only one branch survive, which includes wolves, foxes and their relatives, as well as dogs. So if we rewind back the clock, we first make a stop at 34 million years ago in North America. Here we find one of the earliest caniforms. This was a fox-like animal called the Leptocyon, which only weighed around 2 kilograms or 4.4 pounds. These animals and the species that came out of them would survive until around 9 million years ago when all members of that genus disappeared from the fossil records. But the foundation was laid and the evolution of wolves had started. Then around 10 million years ago, a jackal-sized canid called the Eusion was discovered and it too lived in North America. One of its species, the Eusion davisi, spread out and invaded Eurasia around 6 to 5 million years ago. But it is theorized that in North America, the Eusion would eventually give rise to early members of the Canis genus, which is the group that includes wolves, dogs, and coyotes. Another species called the Eusion ferox may have also played a big and important role in the early evolution of the Canis group, and many think that this species may have marked the beginning of the wolf-like canids. So a bit later, between 5 and 4 million years ago, the first of the Canis genus called Canis lepophagus began to appear in the southwestern parts of North America, around Texas and California. And scientists believe that it may have been one of the first true ancestors of modern wolves, and it may have well been a common ancestor to both wolves and coyotes, being a species at the point where the two modern species would begin to diverge. Then there was also another one called Canis chiliensis, which lived around the same time, around 4 and 5 million years ago, that might have served as the more direct ancestor to modern canines, which were not foxes and coyotes. But here the debate is still on for this one. Then there was a missing record for 3 million years, and nothing was seen there. But if we fast forward a bit, we find a species which is considered to be a direct ancestor, and shared many of the common traits as well as DNA sequences as those of modern wolves. This is of course called the Etruscan wolf, or also called Canis Etruscus, which lived around 1.9 to 1.6 million years ago. This dog-like creature is small in comparison to its descendants, but nevertheless was key in the speciation process that led to modern wolves. The more well-known Ambrosus wolf, however, also called Canis Ambrosteri, living around the same time, is thought to be the ancestor to the dire wolf, and thus marking a branching off in the family tree that would define how related the grey wolves are to the dire wolves. But then again, this theory was later challenged and changed, and hang on tight, we will expand on it in a little bit more detail later in this video. So back to the Etruscan wolf which was endemic to the Mediterranean and the Crimean area, came out its direct descendant and a direct ancestor to the Lupus species. This is Canis mosbachensis, and it lived around 1.4 million years ago, up till about 400,000 years ago. Also known as the Mossback wolf, it is so closely related to the modern wolves that distinguishing one from the other is so hard that it is mostly done by size of the specimens, which led to the belief that they might have just been separate subspecies. And the Mossback wolf is on average a little bit smaller than the large specimens of a grey wolf like the Yukon ones. And thus we finally come to the Canis lupus species, with the earliest known specimens being the cave wolf of Eurasia, also known as Canis lupus spileus. It is the earliest subspecies, which live around 300,000 to 12,000 years ago. So yeah, the cave wolf isn't a separate species but a subspecies of the grey wolf. This means that they could likely interbreed and share a common ancestor relatively recently in evolutionary terms. 
Also, DNA studies show that there was a constant gene flow between the Siberian wolves and the European wolves during the late Pleistocene era. And also the cave wolves were a part of this population network. So these ancient cave wolves were larger than the largest modern ones, but their legs were shorter than as compared to the tundra wolf. But they were the same as compared to the modern arctic wolves, and thus they may be their direct ancestors. Now the modern species of grey wolves have existed for around 250,000 years and have given rise to several subspecies and related populations over time. One of the earliest to branch off was the Himalayan wolf, which was separated from the other grey wolves around 200,000 years ago, adapting to life in the high altitude regions of Tibet and the Himalayas. Next came the Indian plains wolf, which branched out around 120,000 years ago, becoming suited to the dry and open grasslands of the Indian subcontinent. Later during the Ice Age, a population known as the Pleistocene wolf diverged around 80,000 years ago. And around 50,000 years ago, another branch known as the Beringian wolf appeared, which was in the regions of what is now Alaska and eastern Siberia, existing in the frozen lands of the Bering Strait. This subspecies was larger in size and comparable to the size of the dire wolf. And one of the most significant offshoots of grey wolves came when dogs, also known as Canis lupus familiaris, began to separate from wild wolf populations, likely around 30,000 years ago through the domestication by early humans. Much later during the Holocene epoch, which is the current geological period, which began around 11,000 years ago, the red wolf or Canis rufus likely developed, possibly through a hybridation process between grey wolves and coyotes in North America, like a lot of interbreeding. So surprising as it may seem, the endangered red wolves might have been a freak of nature, and the same as dogs, which were divergent in that humans started taking control of their speciation. So that concludes the evolutionary journey of the wolf from its earliest ancestor 34 million years ago up to now. And so, now let's take a look at the dire wolf which has been making headlines these recent days. Are they really dire wolves? And how closely related are they to modern wolves? So straight to the point, the second point, the dire wolf is a larger canine species that is on average around 68 kilograms or 150 pounds in weight, with some individuals that might have exceeded 200 pounds. It is of the genus and species Anocyon dirus, which is not even of the Canis species, which includes coyotes and wolves, and thus they are not closely related to wolves at all, despite their similar appearances. Recent genetic studies have revealed that dire wolves diverge from the ancestors of grey wolves and other canids approximately 5.7 million years ago, evolving in isolation in North America. And also, unlike grey wolves and their subspecies which can freely interbreed, or even between grey wolves and coyotes which sometimes can and do so in the wild, the dire wolves are so distant that it is theoretically highly unlikely a viable offspring or a pup could be created if one of them would have bred with a grey wolf. And even if they did, a sterile pup would have been born, which would be like how a sterile mule comes from the mating of a horse and a donkey. And regarding the recent news about the resurrection of dire wolves, the animals in question are not really true dire wolves at all, but just genetically modified grey wolves. So Colossal Biosciences, the biotechnology company behind it used ancient DNA from dire wolf fossils to identify key genetic traits and then edited the genomes of grey wolves to express these traits. Thus, the resulting animals, while bearing some physical resemblance to dire wolves, are essentially just grey wolves with specific genetic modifications. Basically, they are genetically modified wolves. Anyway, we end this video with that. So like, subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care fam.